I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Good morning, because it's twelve is after twelve midnight in Nigeria, and we are still broadcasting and making videos. We are still dealing with this series of lectures on self-discovery. Tragically, very many people go through life without identifying who they are, what they were born to be, that is their purposes in life, and they stagnate. Some of them get frustrated. Some of them end up doing the same thing in the same place with the same people, and they resort to loud and prolonged prayers, thinking that that will change their circumstances. The truth of the matter is that a lot of people who truly believe in God might end up in old age and eventually die frustrated because they stayed and stagnated in one place doing one thing. Just take a look around your whatever church you belong to, organization you belong to. If the way some of these people are is the whole essence of our calling and our faith, then we are men most miserable. One of the things about self-identification is that, number one, you will start detesting some of the things you are used to. You will start detesting them. It got to a point, I just found out that some of the things I was used to were no more appealing to me in the town where I lived, among some of my friends, in the congregation, in the denomination, and in the nation. See, some of these things will come from the books you have read, your understanding of the Bible, the teachings of the Holy Spirit, you suddenly start realizing that this status quo is not what you are born for. These fellows are not the people you were called to live with. So I always quote Chris Ajiri's principle. Chris Ajiri's principle states that for any normal psychologically mature adult, a time comes when his personal interest comes in conflict with organizational goals. Your personal interest comes in conflict with organizational goals. Your personal interest will be your ideas, your ideals, and the future you want to attain. So you see that once this conflict starts coming, it is a sign that you are identifying yourself. One of the things about identification, self-identification, is distinctiveness. When girls and boys are growing up together, a time comes when the girls start knowing that they are girls and the boys start knowing that they are boys and then separation comes. You see, most people don't come to this maturity of self-identification, distinction, and then distancing. So once you don't come to that maturity, you will find life extremely boring, you will be stagnated, and you cannot fully express your potentials. If a child is breastfeeding, a time comes when breast milk is no longer appealing. So, and sometimes there are conflicts that will originate in the system, in the society, even in the family, that makes you know that you are distinct from what you are used to. So when this distinction comes, 
distancing should follow. So when I came to a certain level of relationship with God, maturity, exposure, reading, learning, and service, and teachings by the Holy Spirit, and the release of my potentials, I suddenly found out that that environment that I used to like, love, serve in was no longer able, was no longer conducive, could not contain me, and there was a distinction between my personality, my values, and theirs. So I, I, when I got to Abba, I so loved the system, I loved the commerce, I loved the church, I loved so many things, but I came to a realization at the point that I'm more of a cerebral person, even though I am entrepreneurial, came to a point I could not flow with the people and the people could not flow with me and it was about to bring conflicts. So I had to move. So that, and that kind of phenomenon comes in a quest for a better you, a quest for a better you. And some people don't have this quest for a better person, a better model of them. They are only interested in the status quo and what they can immediately benefit from the status quo. So have you reached a point where you are dissatisfied with the system, you are dissatisfied with the regimentation, the regularity, when your interests and your ideas are coming in conflict with the system and the society, then you are becoming a distinctive person. And the tendency is that you might want to withdraw so that you don't have conflict. That is one step in self-identification. The next thing is that around this point, you will see a you will see models of the kind of persons you want to be, of the kind of life you want to live, of the kind of ministry you want to run. You will see models. I give you a story, then I will move to another video on self identification. Um, Miles Monroe, one of the men I admire so much. In fact, I saw him at the airport in Oweri. He was in the queue for us to, uh, we're waiting to board a flight to Lagos. Uh, and I identified him. I saw him sitting about two seats ahead of me. And um, I, I prayed a prayer in my heart that I want to be like Miles Morrow in Africa. And I had $300 with me that day. I greeted him, are you Dr. Miles? He said, yes. And I told myself I was going to give him $100 to put a taxi to have my life come in contact with his life. Because my money is my sweat and my sweat is from my blood and my blood is my life. As we landed in Lagos, I gave him $100. I said, Miles, take a taxi with this. And he accepted it. So um, I read from one of his books, The Spirit of Leadership. There was a lion that grew up among sheep. And every day it would go to the stream to drink water with the sheep. And so he started behaving like a sheep. And um, would go with them, was picked up as a cub and reared among lions. It did not notice any difference between itself and them. You can blend with people and suffer from this head effect I keep talking about, H-E-R-O-D, head effect. In fact, if you live near a madman for 21 days who is singing Ungongo Jurejuna Moto, Jurejuna Moto, Ungongo, Ungongo, 
If you live near him for 21 days and you listen to him, you will find out that you are washing cloths one day and you will say, Sociologically, it has been proven that after 21 days, the mirror neurons in your brain will copy the attitudes of those around you. And that's why when you stay in the dark for too long, you start to see. Some of us, the lights in us have not shown out. So we are in the dark and we are seeing and we think that we are good enough. But until a light shines on you, you cannot totally and fully appreciate yourself. There are some of you listening to me now. You are covered by the darkness of um, people, mediocres. You are covered by the darkness of religion. You are covered by the darkness of denomination. You are covered by the de darkness of association. You are covered by the darkness of your nationality and your tribe. And so, the lion was with the sheep. One day, it went to drink water in the stream. And there was another lion, I suspect, from the, the family of that lion, where it, was, it got lost and was picked up as a cub. And the lion stood across the stream and roared, All the sheep, including that lion, took off. In fact, the lion was the first to reach home because it would run faster than the sheep. And it was with, with those sheep there eating the same meals with them. And um, another time, they went to the stream to drink water. And as it looked into the water, it saw its face. And the face resembled the other lion that he saw. And only him took off. And immediately he, he was frightened by his image. Immediately he took off. The sheep also took off with him. And he got home first. He saw his image, his reflection. There are many of you who suffer from social acrophobia. When you see the image of what you are supposed to be, the picture of your future, the revelation of the greatness of who the allotropic manifestation of the diamond in you, sometimes you run away from yourself. You run away from yourself with mediocres and sometimes get indulged in their frivolities. Then they came again to drink water. And then it looked into the water and saw itself. But it looked up and saw the other lion there. Then it, it came to a realization that that, yeah, that thing looks like me. And that lion shouted, Oh, oh. There was something welling up in, 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 in that the lion that was with the sheep. You see, there is, there's a time I talked about, I talked about Chris Ajiri's principle. There is a time you stay with sheep and there is something welling up with, with, within you. There is a dissatisfaction. People who don't understand you will think that you are proud, you are forward, you are arrogant, yeah. and then suddenly it started realizing that it was not like the sheep, it looked around itself, found out that it was different from the sheep, it looked more like what was ahead, and that lion roared, oh, and looked at the lion with the sheep, and turned its face, and started walking into the jungle, this lion tried to roar, they were roaring like a lion, roared like a sheep, wow, and then it finally roared again. The first attempt might not prove you, might not manifest the greatness in you. The second, the third. Then it roared as it roared, it roared like the other lion. All the sheep ran away. Then it crossed the river and followed the other lion away. Sometimes you come across people, you come across systems, you come across structures, you come across infrastructure, you come across success and there's something welling up in you. I went to Canaan land with uh, a woman from, two women from South Africa, with uh, one of my friends. We slept in David Oyedepo's, Bishop David Oyedepo's guest house in Gowon Estate. 
and uh, we said let's go and see Canaan land and we got to Canaan land we couldn't see Bishop David Oyedepo because he was going to receive an award a global award and um, when I got there there was something welling up in me and I raised up my hand to want to worship God and I heard in my spirit put down your hands observe go back home and replicate then I looked at the system I looked at what was going on my other colleagues were talking they were excited they were buying books I was looking and I stole with my eyes and I came back to Ogili and started implementing what I saw my own way based on my own philosophies based on my own principles and my dream today what I have achieved with my wife and my family the branch of the winners chapel here cannot boast of more structures than us in this ministry I saw I was stimulated and I replicated sometimes the reason people should travel overseas the reason people should go and visit some kind of places the reason people should relate with people higher than them is that there can be this stimulus this 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 release of the person trapped in you and when that happens you never a chick never goes back into the eggshell a child never goes back into the womb that is what you need some of you need people to stimulate you models to stimulate you i remain your friend dr charles r po key i would like you to press the like button to help facebook i mean youtube share this video you you can help share this video to help somebody identify himself and then send me a message on plus two three four seven zero five two one three six seven six three and you can gift this ministry online god bless you